Commissioner, we've now reached the sixth and final topic of the consumer credit topics to be addressed in the course of these hearings. That topic is credit card lending. As at January of this year, there were 16.7 million credit card accounts in Australia. In the same month, that is in January of this year, the total value of outstanding balances on credit cards in Australia was 51.6 billion, of which 32.6 billion was incurring interest. Lending associated with credit cards, however, comprises a relatively small proportion of the assets of ADIs. About 1.8% of the gross loans and advances of ADIs in January 2018. Credit cards provide consumers with two main types of service, access to a means to conclude payments and access to credit. Typically, credit cards offer a period of grace of up to 55 days prior to interest being incurred. Customers who pay their outstanding credit card balances off in full within that time frame incur no interest. They mostly use the cards for the purpose of concluding transactions. They're sometimes called transactors. Revolvers, on the other hand, tend to continually roll over their monthly credit card balances, incurring interest at the prevailing rate. Annual fees and other charges are also common. Reserve Bank of Australia data indicates that the typical interest rate on a standard credit card has remained at 19.75% for the last three years. For low interest rate cards, the typical interest rate was 12.95% in February 2018. In its 2015 submission to the Senate Economics References Committee inquiry into matters relating to credit card interest rates, the Reserve Bank of Australia noted, and I quote, that interest paying revolvers account for about 30 to 40 per cent of accounts and about 20 to 25 per cent of transactions, but close to two thirds of the outstanding stock of debt. The RBA also noted that the proportion of revolvers is somewhat higher for lower income households than higher income households. Credit cards, including charge cards such as American Express and Diners Club, are an increasingly popular mode of concluding transactions, with the proportion of transactions made by, via credit cards increasing from 11% of all transactions in 2007 to 22% in 2016. Over the same period, the proportion of value of daily transactions made via credit cards increased from 23% to 28%. Technological advances, such as tap and go technology, are likely to further increase the share of transactions concluded by credit cards. I wish to say something about ASIC regulatory action. ASIC has taken regulatory action in respect of contraventions of the National Credit Act in respect of credit card lending. For example, ASIC has sought remediation for consumers of credit card limit increases, particularly the failure to properly assess whether a credit card limit increase is not unsuitable following the use of automated processes. ASIC has also sought remediation for affected purchases of consumer credit insurance in relation to credit card products in 2017. In 2017. Further, as Senior Counsel Assisting noted in her opening statement <coughs> made on the 13th of March, ASIC has obtained four outcomes against three credit providers for breaches of responsible lending provisions of the National Credit Act since 2010. These outcomes include $1.5 million paid in civil penalties and $11.3 million paid to remediate over 34,000 customers. ASIC has also sought changes to compliance systems 
processes or frameworks, including in relation to changes to a credit card interest rate policy on the default rate of interest, effective from the 28th of February 2012. Regulatory guidance and reports have been published by ASIC on the prohibition of the unsolicited sending of credit cards and debit cards to consumers in 2010 and sales practices for credit cards and consumer credit insurance products in 2011 and 2017. ASIC has also publicly disclosed that it is conducting targeted su industry surveillance on credit card insurers on the effect of credit card design and use on borrower debt levels. A final report is scheduled to be released in the fourth quarter 2017-18. Legislative reforms are also in the pipeline. One issue that has arisen in respect of the assessment of suitability of credit cards is that the obligation relates only to only the minimum repayments required to be made to the entity issuing the card. This sets a somewhat low threshold for the consumer's ability to meet their financial obligations under the contract. As the Commission heard in the evidence of Ms Karen Cox, coordinator of the Financial Rights Legal Centre, the centre has observed credit card increases made to people in circumstances where they could not necessarily pay the credit they already had. Recent amendments to the National Credit Act will change this so that if a consumer would be unable to repay an amount equal to their credit limit within a specified period, they will be taken to be able to, be able to to comply with the contract obligations only with substantial hardship. These changes will come into effect on the 1st of January of next year. Another upcoming reform is to introduce a ban on unsolicited offers of credit limit increases from 1 July 2018. Providers will also be required to give consumers online options to cancel cards or to reduce credit card limits from 1 January 2019. The reforms will also allow consumers to reduce credit limits and terminate credit card contracts, including by online means. I now turn to say something about the case studies about which you will hear here over the next day. In the first case study presented today, we will hear evidence from a consumer, Mr David Harris, who provided a public submission to the Commission. As the Commissioner is aware, many Australians have made submissions to the Royal Commission. As at today, there are 2,581 public submissions, and there will be more in due course as the Commission's work continues. One of those 2,581 public submissions is Mr Harris. Mr Harris will give evidence about his experiences in being offered and obtaining credit cards and credit card limit increases from the Commonwealth Bank of Australia. Mr Harris had a gambling problem of which CBA was aware at least when credit limit increases were, were offered and perhaps ought to have been aware earlier. Nevertheless, Mr Harris was offered a credit limit increase only days after telling the Commonwealth Bank of his problem. Mr Clive Van Horen of the Commonwealth Bank of Australia, who has already given evidence before the Commission, will respond to Mr Harris's evidence and also provide an insight into the Commonwealth Bank's credit card operations more generally. The next case study will look at Westpac Banking Corporation's bank-initiated credit card limit increases from 2012 to 2014. They were later the subject of a remediation of customers facing financial difficulty after ASIC raised concerns that Westpac had failed to make reasonable inquiries into the income and employment status of customers before offering and approving limit increases. In its response to the Commission's letters of December last year and February this year, Westpac acknowledged that ASIC had raised such concerns. Westpac noted that in December 2014, 
It temporarily suspended credit limit increase invitations until it had implemented changes to its processes. As part of its ASIC, ASIC approved remediation program, Westpac made customer refunds and write-offs of around $11.3 million and contributed $1 million over four years to support financial counselling and literacy. Both Westpac and ASIC released media re releases in relation to this issue last month on 7 February 2018. Westpac also acknowledged in its response to the Commission's request for information that in 2012, ASIC became concerned that a message sent by Westpac to customers about credit limit increases created the impression that a customer had to consent to receive invitations for credit limit increases in order to receive the full benefits of their credit card. About 3,700 customers had responded to that message, providing their consent. In response to ASIC's concern, Westpac withdrew the message and agreed not to rely on the consents received pursuant to it. Westpac also acknowledged two other instances of misconduct in relation to credit cards. In 2015, Westpac identified that it had applied interest rates to the starts low, stays low card outside of the lowest quartile in the market, which was inconsistent with an enforceable undertaking provided to ASIC to monitor the card and keep it in the lowest quartile. Approximately 67,000 customers were affected and Westpac conducted a remediation, resulting in payments totalling $2.1 million. A further case study will concern the investigation of the structure of remuneration packages of the credit card sales, marketing and product teams, including the use of sales and other targets in respect of credit cards as part of staff key performance indicators. To that end, statements have been received by the Commission from Mr Gareth Russell, CBA's General Manager Human Resources, Retail Products, Direct Channels and Digital, and from Ms. Carol Saparovic, Westpac's Head of Reward and Performance Management for Consumer Bank, Business Bank and Support Functions. Finally, Commissioner, you will hear about CityLink's practices relating to international <coughs> transaction fees and credit cards. In its submission, Citibank did not distinguish between misconduct and conduct falling below community expectations. Rather, it established a single category of reportable matters. One such matter, acknowledged by Citibank, related to the charging of a fee on Australian dollar transactions in situations where customers purchase from retailers who may not necessarily have an obvious foreign connection and are thus subject to the imposition of an international transaction fee. International transaction fees are charged when online merchants charge consumers in Australian dollars, but process the transaction through an international merchant acquirer, triggering the scheme international transaction fee and the issuer international transaction fee. In those situation, situations, it was identified that Citibank's disclosures to customers could be improved so as to convey a clearer understanding of when particular retailers are subject to international transaction processing fees by card schemes. ASIC released a media release in relation to this issue on 31 March 2017. The media release noted that Citibank had refunded approximately $5 million to around 230,000 customers. Commissioner, having introduced this sixth and final topic, I now call the first witness, Mr David James Harris. Just before Mr Harris comes forward, I think uh, we got to change counsel at the bar table. Do you mind if we get on and do that straight away? I won't leave the bench. Uh, Sorry, you're all geared up to go, Mr. Harris, and then I promptly interrupted. Right. 
right? Yes. Yes. If you'd come forward, Mr. Harris. Mr. Harris, would you prefer to take an oath or would you prefer to make an affirmation? Affirmation, please. Yes, affirm the witness, please. <coughs> I solemnly and sincerely declare and affirm declare and affirm that the evidence I shall give that the evidence I shall give will be the truth will be the truth the whole truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth and nothing but the truth Mr Harris do sit down thank you yes Danelli thank you commissioner Mr Harris can you please tell the commission your full name David James Harris uh, and you have provided with the Commission with your address. I won't ask you to say it. What is your occupation? I am a roofer. I'm qualified in both roof tiling and roof plumbing. Thank you, Mr Harris. Mr Harris, have you received a summons to appear today? Correct. Yes, I have. I tender that summons. Yes, uh, yes Exhibit 1.159. Uh, summons to uh, David James Harris. Thank you, Commissioner. And Mr Harris, in preparing to give evidence today, did you prepare a statement? Correct, yes, I have. And the, you signed that on the 18th um, of March, 2017? Correct. And it's got a number of exhibits? Yep, correct. Uh, and is that statement true and correct? Yes, it is. Uh, I tender this, that statement. Exhibit 1.160, Statement of uh, David James Harris. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, Mr Harris, can you tell uh, the Commission um, about yourself? Um, so I'm from England. I came over in January 2013 on a working holiday visa. Um, I started working within two weeks of being here. Um, and then... I got sponsored at the end of my first year, which means I was on a 457 visa, which ran until February 2018. Uh, and I understand you've applied for permanent residency in Australia? Yep, correct. I'm still waiting for that. And, um, and you work as a, a roofer? Yep, I'm, yeah, roof tiling and roof plumbing. I see. Uh, and... <coughs> Um, and how long have you worked in, in that job? Uh, since I left school, since I was 16. So 14 years. Uh, and your statement and your evidence before the Commission concerns uh, credit cards that you obtained from the Commonwealth Bank. Can you explain to the Commission how you came to obtain um, a credit card from the Commonwealth yeah. Bank? So in around November, December 2014, I applied for my first credit card. I was going to Thailand in, well, I was going back home first just before Christmas and then Thailand in January where I was getting my teeth done. Um, so I wanted to make sure I had enough money while I was there just so I didn't not be able to get my teeth done while I was there. Um, so that was my first credit card, which was approved, which was, had, a limit, had a limit of $10,000. And when you say your first credit card, you hadn't had any other... I'd ne I've never had a credit card, nor any, either in Australia or, or back in England. I see. Uh, and you were working at the time? Yep. I was, uh, so when I applied for that, I'd, been, I'd just done nearly my first year of my sponsorship. So I was on a salary. Okay, and what, um, if I may ask, was your salary at that time? Uh, $70,000 a year. Um, is that still your salary now? No, my, it went up in around... June 2017 to 77,000. I see. Uh, and you, um, you said you got your first um, credit card at the end of 2014. Correct. Um, for what, what was the credit limit? Uh, $10,000. Thank you. And did you um, then use that credit card? Uh, yeah, I used around, uh, over half of it, I, used, I think I put around $6,000 on it um, for, for my teeth and a couple of hotel payments. Um, and then I got back to Australia in February of 2015. Um, I paid that card off, I believe, within t a month and a half to two months of being back in the country. Yes. Um, and then I began gambling on my card. Okay. And you said that um, you started gambling. When, what period was this? It would have been early, first half of 2015, obviously yeah. after I got back from Thailand. 
I see. Had you gambled before that? I've gambled before, but never to the extent that I've done here. So it was always with my own money. I, I gambled for I gambled at a weekend for fun, not never excessive amounts of money, just a few bets here and there. Um, and were you using your, that credit card for that gambling? Correct. Um, and how were you using? Uh, transferring money from my credit card to my bank account and then from my bank account to the betting companies. I see. Um, and did you... Um, did you use the full amount on your... I've uh, used it quite a few times. So I'd, I'd max it out, pay off chunks. I'd, I'd try and work overtime to help pay off chunks of it as well. And then wait till I got a big win or either I'd have saved up a load of money to pay it off and then I'd do it again. I see. And you... I, I think you described that about eight, um, April or May 2015. Yeah. In um, did you... Um, uh, and you had one credit card at the time. Yeah. When did you come to get a second credit card? It, would, it was in May in 2015. I got my second credit card with a limit of $7,000. I see. Um, and why did you get that second credit card? Look, to gamble with. I'd, I kept... I kept. Uh, I had the... So I think at the time I'd, I'd maxed out the $10,000 card. I was panicking about trying to pay it off. And the only way I could see out of it was to try and win some money to pay it off. Uh, and then, as I understand it, you got a third credit card Correct. later that year, is that November. right? November. In November, I got my third credit card, which was $8,000. Was that also through CBA? Yep. Uh, and, uh, and what was the credit limit for that? Uh, 8000 8, And um, in your evidence, you say that then, soon after that, you were offered a credit card limit increase on... I, think I believe that was three to four weeks after I'd got the third credit card. They offered me an increase on my first credit card from 10000 to, I believe, 12100 I see. Um, and they offered that to you. <coughs> How did they offer that to you? Um, I f I, I, it was through a letter they sent to my house. I see. Um, and, and you accepted that, did you? Yeah, I did, yeah. Um, so... Between your three credit cards, then at the end of 2005, what was your credit uh, limit? Uh, 27,100. Um, and were you still uh, were you still in that cycle that you described yep. of maxing it out consistently? And then yeah. Um, and were you using that for your gambling? Yeah. Um, and ha how did you? Um, uh, or were you able to continue paying off? Some or all not, of that not in that. not in full amounts. It's it's, it's ridiculous. It's a ridiculously large amount of money for someone that was earning my wa my wage that I do. Um, so I was working six and seven day weeks pretty much, pretty much for the last three years. At one point, I'd done sixty two days in a row. Had one day off and then done another forty days straight, which isn't easy when you're working on roofs in the sun. Oh, um, obviously, uh, and you. I've then given some, uh, or your statement, you go on to explain a process of consolidation of those credit cards. How did yep. that happen? So I believe I, uh, I banked some money um, at a, 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 a cash point and it didn't, sometimes it goes di it automatically straight into your account and it hadn't gone in. So I run up the bank to find out um, why it hadn't gone in. And then the woman started asking why I had free credit cards, um, saying that, they could consolidate it into one, so I'd, rather than paying the three different lots rates of interest, I'd they put it onto my lower rate card, so I was paying the lower rate of interest. I see. Uh, and you proceeded to consolidate, they were consolidated yep. then? Yeah, correct. Um, and the total limit of which, so then you had one card with $27,100. Yep. Um, now that occurred, I think, in about April, April 2016. Yep. Can you... Yep. You um, had um, a discussion with CBA in around, with the Commonwealth Bank or one of its representatives in October 2016. Can you tell yep. the Commission about that? So uh, in October, I rang the bank to... Basically, I tried changing my address online so I could get a new statement with my new address on. Um, and it wouldn't let me print it out, so I rang up, rang up the bank so they could get one sent out to my post with my new address on. Um, after they'd sorted out, obviously, the, the statement that I needed, um, the bank proceeded to say that I was eligible for another credit limit increase. 
to which I replied, um, no. Um, and they carried on asking, what, what do I want to do with it? So I explained that uh, clearly I'm a gambler, I'm a gam I have a gambling problem. They can clearly see that I've got a gambling problem because of the transactions I've been making. I don't understand why they keep offering more, me more money. Uh, and you then received um, a letter. T Ten days later. That's right. Is this, I might call up DJH3. Um, is this the letter that you're referring to, Mr Harris? Yeah, correct. Offering you an increase from 27,100. That's right. And then... Four weeks after that. Oh, well, if you could, inf maybe I'll, I'll call up yeah. the DJH4. <coughs> it might be the next page. Yes, yeah, Is this page the letter that you, you said yeah, four, a, yeah. four weeks later? Yeah. Uh, and what? They proposed 27, uh, they changed it from 32,000 to 35,100. Did you accept that invitation? Uh, not immediately, no. I ignored it for around another month and a half or something. And so at, at that time as well, every time I was making transfers on my bank account, paying my rent or anything that would come up, you're eligible for a credit limit increase. You're eligible for a credit limit increase every time. And did, um, did it... Uh, did the credit limit, was it ultimately increased to 35,000? Yeah, in January of 2017, I increased it. Um, and then what did you, um, uh, what happened after you had the $35,100? Um, I maxed it out within a space of months, two months, then borrowed, borrowed 35000 off of my boss to pay it off, um, and went into the bank to close my account where... My boss came with me to make sure I was closing it because he knew I had a problem, he was trying to help. I went into the bank and they said in the bank that I couldn't close it in the, in the branch, that I'd have to call up to completely close the account. So I rang the bank to completely close the account and they said I had to do it in the branch. So ultimately I decided just to cut up the card and not use it for, I think, around three months. So you cut it up, yeah. did you? But you, did you, had you closed the account? They, uh, I don't believe so, because I tried to close it. I tried to close it in the branch, tried to close it on the phone, and they told me either one that I had to go to the other one, Yes, basically. Uh, uh, and um, so what did, what did you... You said that you um, cut up your cards. Yes. Um, was that the end of you using the, the credit card? For a while, yeah, and for around two months, two to three months. And, and then what happened? And then I applied for a new credit card, uh, just a replacement card, um, which got sent through, and then I maxed it out again. <sighs> In an even shorter period. You raised a complaint with the Commonwealth Yeah, so I, after, after maxing out again, I, I, I was falling behind. I couldn't afford the payments. So the bank kept chasing me for money, started sending letters, phone calls. I was getting phone calls all the time. A lot of them went unanswered because they were calling from a private number. And I wasn't happy speaking to my bank on a private number and giving them my details when I don't know who's calling me. Um, so I lodged a complaint against them because obviously I'd, I'd, I'd reached out to the bank. And two, two of the hardest things you can do when you're suffering from any addiction is to, one, admit you've got a problem, and two, reach out for help. And in that phone call of Commonwealth, I tried to do both. Just take a moment. Take a big deep breath, and if you want me to stop, I'll stop. For <laughs> That's a bit. fine. Yeah, well, yeah so yeah. I, tr I tried to reach out for help, and I didn't get any. I got, I got the opposite. I got more credit limit increases sent through. When I tried to tell them I had a problem, Uh, and did you have then some further discussions with... Yeah, with... So f nothing, nothing happened for a few weeks. I didn't get any, any, any phone calls back or anything. Didn't hear anything back about my complaint. Just got more phone calls saying that I've been missing payments, that I've not paid anything. So I launched a second complaint with, while I was on the phone to one of, their, one of the 
uh, one of the people from the bank, I launched a second complaint, which was then dealt with. I got passed on to the financial assistance team um, and probably took three to four weeks of discussions between me and the financial team before we came to an agreement. Um, they, they offered to knock off the interest, um, but I basically spelled out in a, a very long email to them that that wasn't, I didn't think that was sufficient. Um, so they came back with another offer and they knocked off $10,000, which I agreed to. Um, so I started making payments under that agreement, which was $100 minimum a month, but I would try to pay $100 a week. I, I've been paying my payments and then continue to receive letters from the bank saying that I still need to send them through more paperwork for my financial assistance, even though I'd already been paying it. Um, and getting more phone calls saying I've missed payments and stuff like that. Uh, Annie, are you still paying off? I haven't paid in a couple of weeks because the la my last discussion with Lex, who it was I was dealing with from the bank, I told I told them they don't need to contact me anymore. I'm already making the agreement. This was after I'd already received a few letters telling me that I still need to send through more documentation. I told him that if they send me any more letters, I'm not I'm not going to continue paying them because it's just causing me stre stress. I don't I don't understand how they're not communicating that the agreement's already in place and it's been paid for a couple of months, for two to three months, it's been paid. And then I'm still receiving letters now. Um, and in your correspondence with <coughs> the Commonwealth yep. um, Bank, or perhaps I can take you to DJH6, this is around that time of September, I think you were referring to. Yeah. Um, um, you were sent a, sorry, I'll let you get to that yeah, document. Um, I'm attaching our personal money plan for you to have a look at and send back to us at your convenience in the next couple of weeks. I'm certainly here to help and I'm, sorry, this is from a representative of, is that? Yeah, that's uh, Lex that, who I was dealing with. I see. Um, and he says, I'm certainly here to help and I'm confident we can organise a long-term solution to remedy you for the negligent oversights we made with your credit facilities. You see that? Yeah. Uh, and um, he then says, I've cancelled your credit card and stopped any future fees or interest. So is it the position that the credit card is presently cancelled? Yeah. Um, and how much do you still owe on the credit card? Um, around 23400 Thank you very much. Thank Mr. you. Harris. Your other party seek leave to question, Mr Harris? Mr Sherry? No, sir. Thank you, Mr Harris. Thank you for coming in and giving evidence. You're excused further attendance. Yeah. <coughs>